analyst and the founder and over of an international company where she teaches people how to successfully trade the stock market. Her trading methodology is based on a strategy called Golden Gaps, which pinpoints institutional money in the stock market. Here to present Short Stocks for Fast Profits is Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. Welcome back to Trader's Corner, Melissa. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Great to be here with everybody on this beautiful fall Saturday going into the holidays. And I'm here to talk to you. Thanks for having me. So I want to get right into it here. I was just listening to the previous presenter talking about the market. We will talk about the market today. I do have a couple market charts in here. And I think that the rally that we've seen in the last two days in the market is really going to trip people up because we have a Fed meeting out in actually a month, a month from today, tomorrow, December 13th and 14th is the FOMC meeting. And the reason the market rallied in the last two days is because the expectation is now that the Fed is not going to raise rates 75 basis points in a month. Guess what? I think they are. And if that happens, guess what? The market is going to sell off. So we're going to talk about some market charts today, but we're really going to talk about trading, making money trading. You can make money shorting. You can make money going long. I will say this, 2022 has been the best year to short that I've ever traded. And I started trading in 2008. Now, when I started trading, I did not know what I was doing. I ended up creating my own system, which took about three years out of my life. And then eventually, years after that, I started a business where I teach people my method. But when I started trading and I started shorting, the market was bullish. And now we finally had just a banner year to short. And I don't think it's over. So today we're going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money for fast profits. I do focus on options and I also focus on day trades. We're going to talk about both of those today. If you have questions, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. Again, as Traders Corner said, I do appear on all national television channels. We've been talking about inflation. We've been talking about the Fed. And I think we're going to see more of a dip in the market, as I said, into 2023, and possibly even higher levels of inflation. They came out also this week when we had the rally that the inflation level dropped. Again, they take into consideration a lot of variables when they're looking at those price points. But if you're a consumer, I know I'm a consumer. I've not have, I have not personally seen any drop in any prices of anything that I've been buying. So, I mean, you said, well, what do you mean, Melissa? You know, the number is a number, a fudgy number. Is did they fudge the number? Well, I know one thing. They're looking at a lot of different things and they're trying to get the number to look as best as it can so the market doesn't collapse anymore. But the reality is that we could be going into a prolonged level of inflation. It could go up again. There could be a point where they can't crunch the numbers to look better next month around. And again, with increased interest rates, it's really affecting businesses wanting to lay people off. You saw that with Meta this week. You saw that with Facebook. You saw that with Apple. And then also, of course, rising interest rates, which has affected the housing market, which had a huge, huge boom, actually, from 2020 into 2021. So again, you can watch me on TV. I never know when I'm going to be on, so it's best to follow me on Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook. So let's talk about making money in the market. And per per personally, when I started trading, I was looking for a new career. Now, maybe you love what you do and you like your job and you don't want to find a new career. That's fine. But you might be looking for a way to make extra money because of increased prices in goods and services that we've seen. Again, one of the biggest reasons why I think we're having a problem and why I think inflation continues is because diesel fuel is almost $7 a gallon. It's way too high. And that affects everything we buy. Every store we go to, how do things get to the stores and trucks? So diesel fuel is up. And that price point isn't getting any better because of the administration's policy on energy. So if you're thinking about just making extra money or if you want to do this for a new career, you can earn a living in the stock market, whether it's part time or full time, if you want to do it. You absolutely, absolutely, absolutely can. And again, I've been teaching people my method for 10 years. This is our year to date stats. This is for the day trades. This does not include the options. OK. This is just day trades with an average risk of about $2,800 per trade. These are day trades, which you would trade on margin. We're at 605054 for the year. This is year to date. This is all the trades, okay? I run a live trading room where I'm calling the trades live. We are mostly shorting. 
mostly short and we sometimes go long. I'm not going to talk about any longs today, um, but again, we do have, there are times where we will go long. But I think overall, going into the end of 2022 and even into 2023, it is up to you to decide to improve your trading. If you want to improve your trading, if you have not had a good year, or if you want to, if you have had a good year, and you want to do better next year than you did this year. In other words, 12 months from now, you want to be ahead financially, not behind. You know, a lot of people got raises even. You've seen an increase in rages, but they're actually behind because guess what? Their 401ks have dropped off this year and they're paying more for the, at the grocery store for gas, for everything, for housing. So even though they got an increase in wages, they're basically seeing a dip in their finances. You have to empower yourself in order to move forward. And what does it all have to do with? It has to do with earning power. It means earning more money. And if you can't control what you make where you're at a fixed level, okay, a salary person, for example, that no matter how much you work, you get paid the same at your position at your job, then you can make extra money by investing or trading in the market, okay? So how do you make it happen? How do you make money in the market? And why do people find trading success so elusive? It's because many, 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 many people that trade do not have a set strategy that they follow on a daily basis that works with a high consistent win ratio in the market. You have to win more than you lose. And actually some of your winners really need to be big winners as well to cover the cost of the trades that lose because some trades will lose, okay? You also need a strategy. Mine is gaps. We're gonna talk about this today. Now, what is a gap? This is a chart of the SPY. And here you see the rally for the last two days. Let's talk about what a gap is. Actually, let's go all the way back here to September. A gap is a difference to the close of the open. There are bearish gaps and bullish gaps. I do both, but I prefer to short. This was the market closed here at four o'clock and opened down here at 930. This was a bearish gap. We shorted it, it dropped, okay? You also could have done a put. What is a put? A put is an option. It's basically a short, okay? So what is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. Boom, right there. Now, there are also bullish gaps. This was a bullish gap. Market closed here, gapped up. Opened at a higher price at 9.30 from where it closed at four o'clock. In this case here, it opened at a lower price, okay? Actually, we can look at here. This was yesterday, Thursday to Friday. We had a gap up. Closed here, gapped up. Rallied, okay? So that's what a gap is. So having a strategy to focus on daily is very important. It allows you to not be distracted by other things, things you see in the news, things you see on social media, friends that you might talk to, being in a trading room where a lot of people are giving out tons of ideas or even the Reddit chat rooms. It can be very distracting when people are telling you all kinds of things and everybody is looking at something different and everyone is thinking something different. When you have a strategy that you focus on and you follow it to the letter, you're gonna have a higher chance of success as long as that strategy has a consistent high win ratio, okay? Because again, trading is about odds. There's no 100% anything, okay? And if anyone tells you that, they're lying. I take trades that lose, and that's why I have a fixed risk, okay? I put in a stop, it's called a limit order stop, it's a hard stop. If it stops me out, I lose, but I have more winners than losers, and that's how you can make money. And once you come to accept the fact that anything that you do has to have a set fixed risk, you'll be okay then through the losers knowing that the next five, six, seven trades or whatever that you take will be winners after you have the one loser. And that'll help you over the hump because you believe in yourself and you believe in the strategy and you believe in your own ability to be successful. Now let's look at another chart here. This is Amazon. Again, what is a gap? This closed here, gap down, fell. Then it had earnings this night. Close to your gap down, fell. So this closed the night before here, roughly at 110. This was the 27th of October. Open in the morning down here was like around 97 and change, and it gapped down. Close to your gap down. So again, down here's the volume. These are the candlesticks. Now, again, we can look at gap ups. This is Amazon from Thursday to Friday. This went with the market. Close to your gapped up, rallied. Okay, so theoretically you could have gone long Amazon on Friday. I did not, but you could have. And if you did, you made money, okay? So again, what do I do? I do gaps. What is a gap? 
A stock gap, so the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple, but you can't short every bearish gap and you can't go long every bearish gap and you can't go long every bullish gap and you can't short every bullish gap either. So it is about finding the good ones, okay? You only need one good trade a day in order to make money. That's it. I mean, it really is as simple as that. So I spend a lot of time in the morning in the pre-market, way before the market opens. I get up sometimes five o'clock in the morning and I am rating gaps and analyzing the market and narrowing down in hundreds of things to try to find the best thing to trade each and every single day. It's like trying to hit a bullseye every day. And I always say it can be perfect for 30 minutes a day. I can be perfect for a half an hour a day. Maybe I can be perfect for an hour. It becomes increasingly harder and harder to be perfect for six and a half hours a day. So I don't trade all day from 9.30 to 4. Because again, a lot of things are happening in the world, in my life. The phone rings, email, this thing, that thing. To try to be perfect for with 100% concentration for six and a half hours can be exhausting. Okay? So narrow down the time frame for yourself where you're going to allow yourself to focus on making money in that set time frame. And that will also help you too. It's the focus on the time frame, the focus on the pick, the focus on the strategy, which again, increases your wins and lowers your losses, okay? And if anybody has any questions here, you can just plop it in the room and I'll see them as we're going along. So again, this, is a, this was a nice chart here. And while I watched this rally, we actually shorted this here as a day trade and I lost an Amazon this day. But I held the conviction and we did a put, okay? A put is an option and that went and it went boom and it went and it worked. So again, I was right, the stock was lower here. But on this particular day, it lifted because Apple rallied this day. It was the 28th, it was a Friday and the market rallied too, so it lifted Amazon. But I was right on reading this in the rating because it fell and we got it in the option. It was a really, really, really nice trade. So again, what is a gap? Here's another one we did. This was earnings too, it was Adobe. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Closed up here, ran above 370. Open in the morning here, around 320, fell. We shorted this as a day trade. We also did this as a put. It went boom, 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 and it fell. This rally does well with the market. 98% of the stocks that trade on any given day are gonna go with the market. And many times I'm trying to find something specific that has actually nothing to do with the market, nothing to do with the market at all, where I don't need the market's help in order to get the move, whether the move is up or down. But again, like I said, I prefer to short. Why do I prefer to short? Because you get faster moves to the downside, faster trades to the downside. And that's extremely important because again, you don't wanna have to worry about FOMC minutes or meetings or news or something that could happen with Russia or Ukraine. Things can happen all throughout the day, and that can mess up your positions and your trades. So the faster you can be in and out and make money in something, the better off you're going to be. Now, how do I make the decision on the trades? Besides looking for the gap, the whole philosophy is that I'm looking for institutional money. So what is institutional money? Institutional money in the market is big position players, professional traders, okay, retirement funds, hedge funds, small ones, big ones, big money in the market, large banks that take positions in stocks, okay? They trade with volume, they trade in the pre-market, and they trade in the post-market, and they trade on the live day. So if you are going with institutional money and they're buying a stock and you're long, you're going to succeed and make money. If you're against that, you're gonna lose in every case, in every scenario that there is. And again, same thing to the opposite. If you are short, okay, and an institution is selling a stock, you're gonna make money very easily. Adobe was a great example. Amazon was another great example. The lift that happened on that day was not institutional money coming in to buy the stock. It fell consequently after that the following week because it was getting dumped by institutions, okay? And this is what may, has made the market so volatile for 2022 and has confused so many traders, 
so many traders, so many trader educators, so many professionals, so many retail traders, so many beginner traders. It has confused a whole lot of people because the market has not acted in accordance with what many people anticipated for the year of 2022. But I must say that in 2021, the market was extremely bullish, power trended all year. And if you look at the backdrop of the economy, if you like to follow fundamentals, it didn't make any sense. It made no sense how we rallied in 2021. I personally thought this is ridiculous, just like I just said about the inflation number, which happened a couple of days ago. That's ridiculous, and I know that as a consumer. I don't need anyone to tell me that inflation's gone down. I know that's not true, okay? So the fact is that people were put off then in 2022 when we fell because it made no sense because we were so bullish and it extended so much in 2021 that people just thought it's impossible for us to drop off because we had so much buying that came in in 2021. But really when you look at where we jumped from 2016 all the way up to 2021, which was five years, through two election cycles, the market has had a huge rally. So people really, if they bought in 2016, are still up, okay? And that even includes the COVID drop off that we had, the sell off that we had in 2020. So when you're looking to take positions as a retail trader, as an individual trader, as an active trader, you just care about today. You want to make money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're looking at long-term retirement, you know, you'd have to know who would win the presidential election in 2024 to be able to accurately predict where the market's going to go five years from now. And nobody knows that. So as a retail trader, as an active trader, you need to concern yourself with right now today because the whole point of trading is pulling money out of the market on a consistent basis, whether it's $500 a day or $1,000 a day or whatever you can afford to risk, okay? So we're looking at these quick moves, these fast moves, and again, the big moves, the momentum moves when we're taking a position in something. And the faster, the better. The quicker, the better, okay? So don't make trading hard. You got to trade with the power, not against it. Again, while theoretically you could have gone long the market Thursday and you could have gone long the market Friday, many people did and they are still long the market. And I would not be surprised if the rally doesn't hold. Okay, I'm telling you this. Now, again, the Fed meeting is a month away and it's a holiday week in two weeks. We have Thanksgiving. But the reality is that people have been tripped up this year because the market has not done what they thought it would do. People continue to buy the dips all year, even in February when we dropped off, people kept buying the dips, kept buying the dips, kept buying the dips. What I've found, and this is in 10 years of tra training people, teaching people, I didn't even know this before I started teaching and started the business of stock swish. People prefer to go long rather than short. I don't. I'm in the camp that I prefer to short rather than go long. I will go long if I see it, but I prefer to short. Focusing on the short side has given me advantage in order to make money in the market, and it also has given me advantage to see really when to go long. Because when I go long, by golly, it's good. And there was a guy in my trading room, he said, I always go long whenever Melissa says it. I always, always do it. Because if she's going long something, then I know it's 100% going to work and no chance of failure. The one thing we've gone long this year that has worked almost every single trade we've taken is CVX, Chevron. It's extremely bullish. It made new highs. It gapped up on Friday it's higher. That's oil, okay? You're still seeing a push up in oil prices with the Russia-Ukraine situation. And again, what's happening with that? So easy to read. Institutional money's buying oil. I mean, they are going long oil and it, and it, and it never sells off. Like if it sells off, it's like, eh, it's like a little baby, baby sell off. And even if it has one red bar that looks big, it reverses almost immediately. So, you know, again, people tend to want to go long I guess it's because the concept of buying low and selling high is something that people can wrap their head around. But you've got to understand that it's just as easy to go short. And actually, I think it's easier. But many people don't know what to short. And they have trouble looking for institutional money in the market. And sometimes it's split. And that's hard for people. That's even harder for people, actually. So learn to spot institutional money and trade with it. It makes your, It's going to make your trading life so much easier. And then you'll make more money on a regular basis. So I'm following the moves that institutional money makes in the market. I'm following them and capturing those moves in a small time frame every day. Okay? So a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks, creates momentum, and sets the trend in charts. And when you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. 
or the market, you want to be on the side of power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And don't ever forget it. Don't ever, 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 ever forget it. Okay? And that's why I didn't go long on Thursday or Friday. While we technically could have, we did have a gap up. You could have gone long on those days and made money. Okay? I know that institutional money is in charge in the market and stocks at all time. And it's not buying this market yet full force. So therefore, I'm not taking any long positions overnight in the market. Now let's take a look at here at a couple charts that we did. This is Meta. We did this. This was earnings. This was Facebook. Stock closed her gap down, fell, dropped. This was a nice sell-off here, a beautiful sell-off here. This was just two weeks ago. And again, this was to the downside. What was happening in this? It was falling, okay? You can win big on this side of power if you're getting something in the right direction. It's all about one focus, one strategy. And for me, it's gaps. Now, we did an option in Apple here. This, this we just did recently, actually. It expired on Friday, but we did it and got out of it. We did it Thursday, November 3rd. I'm going to show you the chart in Apple in a minute. 350 was a cost for one contract. Whether you took an advanced trader risk of 20 contracts or three, which was 1,050, it was 129% return on the investment, and actually you could have even held it for a little bit longer. This was a nice trade. So we did the 142s. I sent the trade out early in the morning, very early. You can't do the trade until the open. But let's take a look at it. Thursday the 3rd, here's Apple. Take it up, closed here, gap down, fell, dropped. Boom, out, done. Got it. Here's we did it, 142, got the drop, fell, boom. That was a short, it was a put. Again, we're looking to do the short, fast options. One week, so we're doing the weeklies. That trade happened in 24 to 48 hours, okay? That was a nice move. You could have spent $350 and done one contract, and you could have doubled your money in that, more than doubled your money in it. That here was the meta. November 2nd, we did the 92s. This was really cheap. 280 for one. Again, 30 contracts, four contracts, whatever you can afford. It was a nice trade, almost 80%. Let's look at the 92s. November 2nd was here. Stock close here, gap down, fell, gap down again, boom, done, out, dropped. Here's the move. Did it in 92s, got the drop, fell through the strike, out, done. Again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful short okay it's a putt but it is a short so again gaps have huge opportunity huge opportunity because they spot the power of money and you get in and get out you get in get the move get out you get in get the momentum and get out again whether it's long or short but i do prefer to short so gaps are created with large institutional money that's what makes a gap in the first place it's big money. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing, and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correction, correct direction to play the gap. And then you have to confirm that the large money will flow through it and with it. And by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Gaps are an event. It's an event in a chart. It creates a sense of urgency, particularly if it's to the downside. Why? People panic when they're down money. They panic. No one panics when they're up, for one thing. And no one's panicking if you're not even in it at all. So, I mean, if you're not long the market and it falls Monday, eh, you're not going to panic. Okay? Anyways, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. It's so powerful and so many people don't understand how to trade gaps and they're looking at moving averages and fibonacci's and they're looking at all kinds of indicators that do not tell them the right information sometimes they do but not all the time not more than it doesn't training gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and money how do i do it i look at a checklist this is what you'd come and learn from me if you decide you like anything that I say here today or anything I've said resonates with you and you want to come and learn from me, I teach you my checklist in a class. It's a two-day class that I teach once a month. There's only one more class left this year. It's in December. It's a month from now, actually. It's December 10th and 11th. But this checklist is how I know it's 7.40 in the morning. 
that meta is going to fall, that Apple's going to fall, that the market's going to fall, or whatever I happen to do. Okay. But again, power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Power money is in charge all the time. Trends are set and moved by the power money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. So much money in the market. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Banks control the world. They invest. And again, some non-voting FOMC members came out Thursday and Friday when the inflation data was lower than expected and stated that they that they they stated something to the effect about backing off on rates that had absolutely no meaning and no one should have taken a long position based on that because I listened to what uh, the Fed chairman said a couple of weeks ago when he or two weeks ago whenever it was when he made the statement he said, we will stay on track. We will stay on track for our target price of 2% inflation. We are nowhere near that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they continue raising rates 75 basis points one month from now. And again, the market could rally every day between now and then and then sell off after they end up raising rates. But no one should be buying in the market for any reason at all because somebody happens to say that they think this is gonna happen Again, it makes no sense. So the market moves a lot, a lot on emotion. Now, I don't make trading decisions based on fundamentals, even though I talk about them on TV, because I have to. They say, Melissa, what do you think about this? And then I say what I think. But a lot of what I think has to do with how I'm reading the price, the price action in the market and in stocks that are controlled by the market. Like if I name you know, 25 things right now that are nowhere near the high, nowhere near the high, all of these things pulled together, when I'm looking at them, how they're gapping up and down on every single solitary day, the things we're trading, the things that are moving, the things that are moving up and down, I can tell where we're going in the overall market. So it's really about thinking intellectually. When you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, I understand now, it's better to go with big money. Yeah, that makes sense, Melissa. That's right, it does make sense. And it doesn't make sense to go against it. But many traders wanna be tricky and they think, well, if I go against it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this at a super, 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 super low price, and it's going to rally, and then I'm going to make a million dollars. No. Okay? Again, how do you consistently make money in the market and become successful as a trader doing something, doing the right action over and 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 over again? It's not about having one big, huge trade that like makes up all the losses you've ever had for losing for the last 5, 10, 20 years if you've been trading and unsuccessful. It's not about that. You have to take it day by day by day by day by day. And every day is different. Every day is different. I don't know what I'm going to do Monday, and I won't know until I get up. I don't know where the market's going to be Monday morning, and I won't know until I get up. And I'll look at the future Sunday night, tomorrow night, I'll look at it, okay? But it could be different Monday morning from Sunday night. So I'm always looking for who's in charge. Who's in charge? The bulls or the bears? This is a great example because I'm looking at the cues. If I had done this webinar, if it was pretend we go back and we fast rewind in time, if I had been talking here today and somebody would have been talking about going long, they would have said, woo, go long. The candles look good. The setups are there. Boo, woo. And look what we did. We lost it all. Came all the way down. This is a great chart. So who's in control? Well, the bulls weren't in control in June, and the bulls weren't in control in July, and the bulls weren't in control in August, and they weren't in control in September either. And actually, I did a segment on Ameritrade, and they were saying, oh, it was so bullish in October. I answered the question from the anchor, but I was like, no, it wasn't. We, we, we didn't go anywhere in October. We rallied, and then we fell off. We were neutral in October, if you really want to get specific there, you really want to crunch it. We didn't go anywhere in October. We rallied, failed, dropped. We went nowhere. So anyways, this is a good chart. It's a good example because in July, a lot of people thought that was a market that was a low for the year in the market. And now people swear up and down that October 13th is a low. Maybe it is a low for the year. I know one thing, though. We're not going to make a new high this year before the end of the year. We don't have enough time. No way do we have enough time. We're not going to make a new high in anything except for, I mean, anything market-related, I should say. Specific sectors. Oil was one of them that I talked about. And again, any questions, plop them in the room. I can see them. Getting back to what I was saying, how do I figure this out? I'm talking about the market. 
what makes me say these things or predict these things the day that I'm doing them, or even between now and the, and the Fed meeting, because I'm looking at the rating system that I apply when I'm making the decision, the Golden Gap rating system. It's a 26 point rating system that pinpoints the direction of power money by rating price, okay? And we're not full throttle in, okay, as far as the market goes. This is what gives me conviction, the rating system, to put on a position in money, whether it's for $8,000 in an option or $2,800 in a day train, I get conviction from using my system and applying it. And of course, I've been doing this for 14 years. A lot of traders trade and they're jumping up and down, back and forth all the time using different indicators and different systems and different methods of trading. They'll go from Bitcoin to futures. They'll go from futures to day trading, day trading to options, and they jump around too much. So they never get good at anything. They never get conviction at everything. And again, they're winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing, and ultimately then losing and wasting years and years and years of their lives. So I condense it by teaching my system in a two-day class. It is a full-on class because it is 14 hours straight, and it is full-on where you have to pay attention. We do a one-hour break for lunch and a one-hour break for lunch both days, so it's 14 hours total. But it's basically full-on learning everything that it took me three years to figure out. If you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders. And day traders right now are buying the dip in the market for the last two days. Okay? It's not that I'll never go long the market again. Maybe I will. But I'm not going long right now. And actually, I highly doubt I'm going to long the market at all between now and the rest of the year. But you've got to have an edge. You, you just got to. Because there's too many people out there wanting the same thing. Everybody wants your money. This is a zero-sum game. Like the movie The Wall Street. Great movie, filmed in New York City where I live. It's a zero-sum game. We're not, I'm, not, I'm not needing a sweater every morning and selling it on the street in a pop-up. I'm taking somebody else's money when I make money. When I'm shorting Amazon and someone's going long it, or I'm shorting the market and someone's going long it, and then it drops, I'm taking that person's money. And you need to understand that. So it's it's pitting the, the most intelligent people, the most successful people, the, the wealthiest people in the world against everybody else. So you have to be on the side of the, the intelligent people, the smart people, and I hate to say it, the wealthy people. As much as people want to demonize people that are successful and wealthy, they control a lot of what happens in the market. They're taking positions in. You can't compete against them. And, and, and if you think that you can, it's a, it's a fool's game. You're fooling yourself. You're not dealing with reality. It's like people say, oh, taxes. Yeah, you live in the United States. You must pay taxes. Accept it for what it is. But you can be successful if you accept the fact that institutional money does drive the market. So just learn how to read with it so that you can be successful too, so you can be rich too. Because it's not within the realm of your experience. Because it will always be the case. It will always, 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 always be the case that more people lose in the market than win. It just, it just is. But the people that win then tend to make an extreme amount of money. Okay. The kind of money that we all want to make. And again, any questions here, let me know. Anyway, success requires a plan. A 26 point checklist. I go through this rating system every single morning. Boom. I go through it. I rate it. That's what you come and learn from me. But a checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists. Pilots have checklists. Doctors have checklists before they perform surgery, okay? And not only that, having a checklist helps you, keeps you organized and focused. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart instead of getting emotional, okay? Or getting, you know, caught up in whatever's on TV or whatever they're saying, Having a checklist is, helps you assist you with directional bias, and having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals, which you want to do, and you should have goals. We're going to go over one week of trades here. I'm watching the time here because I want to make sure I go through the uh, information at the end about when the next class is. But this is an average risk of $2,800 roughly per trade. This is one week of trades, 15486 Let's take a look at the week. 11.7, we shorted Apple. Here's the entry, 136.80, we got out at 135.68. Two grand was a profit, it was 11.7. Again, here, it doesn't even look like much. 
It barely looks like anything at all, but this is the precision in me taking the train on the one minute chart, getting in and getting out. Stock closed here, gap down. We shorted it, boom, got in, got out. There was news on Apple on this particular day. It gapped down, we got in and out fast. It was a good trade. Then, 11.4, we didn't do anything. There were no golden gaps. Sometimes you don't get anything good, you wait for the good ones. You can't just take pot shots, okay? Nothing rated per the 26 point criteria, we didn't trade. 11.3, we did the Qs. Q, Q, Qs, here it was, 11.3. Again, market closed here, gap down, fell, boom. See this red bar here? We shorted it. Entry was 262.20. Risk was 31.50. Exit was 260.50. Again, see the move? Almost $2. In, out, boom. Profit was $2,550. Again, 11.3. This day I'm here, the day before, was the day the market reversed. Closed here, gap down, rally, drop. That was the day that first the market rallied because everyone said, oh my God, woo, and then it fell. Now that day we did the SPY, this was 11.2, we shorted the market here in the morning, closed here, gap down, fell, this reversal was later when the minutes came out, we were out before then, and then it fell really hard. So you see where we ended up closing here around 375, but we shorted in the morning at 383.50, we're out, dollar twenty move out, done, boom. We were out quick that day, I knew the FMC minutes were clocking, you do not know what he was going to say, we didn't. We did fall. We did fall. We captured the short move early, and we got in and out of it fast, but it came all the way down here. That was 11.2. 11.1, we did Uber. We did actually go long this. The funny thing was it actually closed red. Um, this closed here, gapped up. This rallied. This rallied, and in the rally, we went long. We got in and out of it in the morning. Entry was 30.30, exit was 30.90. We pulled 60 cents out of it, boom, done. This was a little one here, but this was a long. And it's kind of ironic because it closed red, but we did go long here and we did make money and we did get out right. Again, I'm trading in the morning quick, fast. And then on Halloween, we did meta. This was, a, we did an ad in this because I really, really liked it. 97.40, out of it 97.20. Average price was 97.30. We exited at 94.90. This continued. I just want to show you the day here was Halloween. Stock close here, gap down, fell. I just want to show you where this went. You could have pulled a new $2 plus out of this from where we exited this, which was in the morning fast. You could have pulled another $2 plus out of this if you held it. Again, I like to trade in the morning and get out quick. This was a really nice entry and a really good trade and a really nice one. And we also did an option in that. That was Halloween. So that was just, just to show you a week of trades here, day trades. Again, I do options as well. Well, these are day trades, trades you take on margin. So if you look at the time you spend trading versus actually in the trade, I spend a lot of time on doing the analyzing. Before I trade, I get up early, rate my gaps. That way I'm in and out quick, fast, in and out. Who has that kind of money? Larry is asking. What kind of money? The kind of money to take this trade? Is that what you're saying, to short meta? First of all, you should be trading on margin. Second of all, if you have a margin account at a prop place, you would need $10,000, you get 10 to one margin, and $10,000, which give you 100,000 in buying power and 10 to one margin. For a th and, that, and that would be something that you could take with 1,000 shares. This example here initially has 1,400. And again, if you have less than $10,000, Larry, you shouldn't really be probably doing equity trading on margin. You should be doing options, in which case you could have done an option. And I'll go back up in here to show you the meta trade. You can do options on cash with a smaller account instead of trading on margin. It's the same position. It's the same trade. You could have done this and paid $280 for one contract with a beginner risk. And if you don't have $2,000 to open up an options account to do a cash trade on, on options, again, this is the same gap in meta that I just showed you in the day trade, Larry, then you have no business trading if you don't have a minimum of $2,000 to open an options account on cash and take one contract in meta that would have cost $280. You shouldn't be trading. And if you don't have enough money to do active day trades, then you trade options on cash where you don't need margin and the cost of the positions is cheaper. 
So if you're asking me if you have to take large size, the answer is no. If you don't have even $2,000 to open up an options account, you should not be trading. Yes, you have to have money to trade. But if you have a small account, then you trade options, okay? But you can trade a prop account on 10 to 1 margin with $5,000 or $10,000. Well, that should answer that question. Anybody else's? And actually, there are a lot of people that actually do have money, Larry. There are quite a few people that are trading with me that actually do have money, okay? And they are making money. And then there are people that are somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle, okay? They've grown their accounts, and now they're risking more and trading more. Started out as options, now they're doing day trades and options, okay? You have to start with what you can afford. But to say you don't need any money to trade is insane, you do. To say you need, you know, 500 grand to trade is insane. You don't need that either because you don't need to be risking this kind of risk. I'm showing you this for the stats because I trade with an advanced risk. Okay. FTX had to do with cryptocurrencies. I don't trade cryptocurrencies. I don't trade cryptocurrencies at all. And actually the charts, if I was a chart reader and reading cryptocurrency charts, I don't think the charts have enough history or data to be able to trade in them. So no, again, I was just talking about the fact that you have to focus on one thing. I said, I've been trading equities, gaps for 14 years and nothing else. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you need a high winning strategy. This says regardless of your risk, okay? And you need good money management and you need a good mentor to follow. And again, the time of the day is so, so key. So if you want to trade for a living, you can do it from home, but it is about chunking it out. You could take a small account and grow it. You could take a medium account and grow it. You could take a large account and grow it. Either way. So empower yourself to trade. My class, if you're interested, is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches you price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. So this is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So again, if you're interested, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. The last class of the year is December 10th and 11th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The class tuition is $69.99 U.S. dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world, like I said, and take it. Now, I'm starting out Black Friday specials. A sneak peek for Black Friday. These specials all end November 27th. I mean, uh... Yeah, November 27th. So that's Sunday, a Black Friday weekend. So it's the Golden Gap Course Combo Tuition, which is $74.99. It includes the Golden Gap Course and the Trends Course. If you sign up for this, you will get the Trading Room free for one year and the Options Newsletter free for one year. Again, class is December 10th and 11th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. This is a great deal because normally I charge for the Trading Room separately and the options newsletter separately. So you get two classes and all the trades for one year free with this offer. It is good through November 27th. If you're interested in options, options only, then I'm doing an options Black Friday sale. It's $59.99, which is a thousand off. The options newsletter is $69.99. You get the options newsletter for more than a year through the end of 2023. This also is going on this sale through November 27th. You also receive the Gap Options course free. And again, you get the bonus time because it's normally $69.99 for 12 months. This is $59.99 through the end of 2023. And then I'm doing a couple other specials, the Market Report, some other classes, mentoring sessions, and the Gap Options course, which includes one month free of the Gap Options newsletter for 1000 off as well, $1,500. And then again, I have some testimonials in here. Any questions from anyone? Uh, Chris is mentioning I'm running late. Actually, the last person ran late. So Rob said that I could have extra time. Chris doesn't like my voice. Well, I would suggest that you probably don't come and take my class. <laughs> so you won't miss out on the opportunity to get my great trade calls and my read of the market. That's what I suggest for you. Any questions from anyone that's interested in anything that I said today?
great. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Melissa, I apologize for the audience, but I thank you for a great presentation. <laughs> your topic, short stocks for fast profits, had me on the edge of my seat, and your Golden Gaps course looks amazing. Thanks. Thank you for making such a generous offer to our audience by giving them 13 or 14 months for $1,000 less than the price of 12. That's very generous of you. Thanks so much, Rob. Don't worry about it. I'm a New Yorker. I'm thick-skinned. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am as well, so it's always have great to have weekend. you on the show. We hope you come back and see us. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Melissa Armo, and you can find